Top Story with Evans Mensah. And Top Story is always brought to you by Vodafone. Brace yourselves tonight for more blackouts. Join us as learning the economic crisis is beginning to inflict a heavy toll on government's ability to keep the lights on. There are desperate negotiations underway tonight to avert a full-blown doomsaw. After the West African gas pipeline company, WAPCO, cut gas supply that left parts of the country in darkness last night due to government's indebtedness. The minority in parliament is pegging this in indebtedness at $20 million. According to the Ghana Grid Company, Gridco, a shortfall in gas supply from Takrade to Tema resulted in the loss of 550 megawatts of power as of Thursday. We have the latest on the negotiations with WAPCO shortly, but first listen to the chairman of the Mines and Energy Committee, Samuel Atachian, who is asking for patience as he concedes the economic crisis is biting. Anybody who has a sense of this nation, I mean, you know that there are cash challenges. The fact that I even went to IMF should let you know that we have serious financial challenges we're looking at. If you look at it from that perspective, we should have patience for um, issues to bounce back. And if we owe, we pay. Look at how the, the energy sector has been sustained all this work, all these years under President Kufuor. I'm telling you that he's done the humans just for us the energy sector is concerned. But when you have financial challenges as we find ourselves in, sometimes it's a cash situation, not incompetence. If we improve our cash situation and we have a leeway to uh, pay money under contractual obligations, the president and the energy minister will be the first to, I mean, uh, pay money. And then that's the end of the problem. Uh, but and, 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 what and, I have been edu educated, yeah. Yeah, and Council, that, that's where many say if there's a reason to doubt government, it should be at this point, to the point that you're raising about uh, being cash-strapped or perhaps finding ourselves in a financial difficulty. You have energy as the heartbeat of the economy. There's one central, I mean, economic activity which is primordial to the function of the entire economy. Uh, please credit them with wisdom that they will not plunge us into darkness because that to worsen the crisis of this nation. So if they have to squeeze water out of stone to meet that particular strategic need, um, <laughs> uh, Dr. Matthew Poku Premfe and uh, the finance minister and the presidency will put the requisite arrangement in place to ensure that we will not plan to do so. This assurance, they've been saying it, and they've been giving it to the, the Ghanaians. I think we shouldn't be people who want to say that, well, we pray that it happens so that we have equalization. It's not going to happen. He's either assuring that a prolonged doomsaw situation will be averted. I want to assert that I wouldn't want to do any post mortem as to what has happened. Mm. But what I've been, I've, been, I've, I've been told in the strongest term that won't plunge the nation into doomsaw. So every solution that is needed. To solve the problem will be solved because half the time the cheapest way to go is to apportion blame and the rest of them but the real thing is to find a solution and um, the minister and the government are poised to resolve the problems and the difficulties we are facing mm. but the good news is that it is not the timetable of this nation that we plan you to do so. Right. Uh, we're just hearing from the minority side uh, of the House. They are first of all uh, asking for a probe into this matter uh, and also describing uh, the government side as being incompetent in cutting down or perhaps revising some of these contracts. Your response? Well, they, they, they say that, that the port calling the kettle black. If you look at that um, uh, horrible record of doing so, it doesn't compare with what is happening now. So one off situation should not be uh, anything that should sort of bring agitation and alarm. So they, they, should, they should stop the ambulance way of looking at problems. And let's see how we find solutions to it. But what I'm, I'm assured of is that if there is a problem, 
There's not going to be a perennial doomsday situation. And head of our energy desk, Kojo Brace, joins me in the studio. Kojo, we've been trying to get the very latest on the negotiations to pay mm. the debts that we owe WAPCO, yeah. which reason they cut the uh, supply to us. What do we know tonight? Uh, we know that tonight, government uh, represented by GMPC, because GMPC is the one that pays them, and WAPCO have reached a tentative agreement to try and have a certain payment plan. But what we also do know that aside the agreement, there still will be some outages because once there's been some agreement it still does not guarantee that gas is available from takradu to tema in the space so there will be some outages tonight probably it is only tomorrow that we would expect that the situation will normalize okay so that is something that we can expect to happen yes uh, tonight on the yeah. back of what happened yesterday exactly yes. some form of agreement may have been reached uh, today between wapco and gmpc mm. and then of course but we still do know and we can confirm that there will be some outages tonight because after the agreement gas is not available uh, you know within the time the agreement was reached so there will still be that gap uh, in terms of power production and thankfully we can speak to jifa bampo who is manager corporate communications at gridco hello jifa thanks for your time here on top story uh, yesterday the shortfall was 550 megawatts what is it tonight Evans, today I'm unable to give the shortfall because now that we are learning of a tentative agreement, there might be some gas coming through. Um, we don't know the extent. So usually it takes a bit of time to see which power plants uh, pick up and then we will know the full shortfall. So probably in another hour I'll be able to give the projected um, you know, loss of megawatts. I guess for most people listening tonight, uh, they will want clarity on whether or not they can expect to sleep in darkness or otherwise. Uh, from what you're suggesting, uh, the estimation is that we can expect some shortfall. Uh, we just don't know it just yet. Yes, there will be some shortfall. And this is not because the plants um, are not working. On a technical level, it takes some time for the gas to come through the pipelines at peak level. And it also takes time for the thermal plants which use this gas to also get to optimum level where then you can have your full capacity. It takes, from what I know, when a plant is down, sometimes up to three hours. So it's really difficult to say that is because some agreement has been reached. So we are waiting to see what comes through to Tema and then we will know what the shortfall is. There was a projected shortfall in the morning, but with this agreement, it wouldn't be uh, fair to mention that amount because it could change. And so if I have the update, even if you are not on air, I'll make it available to you and your team. And has this made it uh, a situation that has uh, forced some of the plans to shut down just yet? I beg your pardon, I didn't any get of, the question. Has any of the plants shut down just yet because of the challenges that we faced in the last uh, few hours and days? Oh, some of the plants have been down since Wednesday. And that's because we've just not had the gas coming through the pipeline from uh, Abuadi Pakwadi. So what it says is that we receive gas from two sources. We receive gas from Nigeria. There is no problem there. It's only 65 million standard cubic feet. We receive gas from the Western Enclave, from ENI Sankofa and from Palo Jubilee. That totals some 335 million standard cubic feet of gas. Not all that gas is used at once in the Takwadi Abuadi Enclave. Some of it is shipped down, transported down to Tema. It is that excess gas of about 150 million standard cubic feet that we are not receiving since Wednesday, which is why some of the plants in Tema, and these are plants like um, Sunonasogli, they can't run. They need gas to run at full capacity to give you some 360 megawatts of power. That's for Sunonasogli and then the others. 
So it's not as simple as, oh, it's just a shortage. There are dynamics in the value chain that need to be addressed. And, so and we are hoping that with this tentative agreement, I'm optimistic that tomorrow we will have more gas and then these outages will come to an end. And there have also been some complaints about instability in the energy sector for some time, especially September 26th to 8th October. What explains this? Thank you for raising this because I did monitor the space when these issues were raised. At the time, it was really difficult to address them because on every different day, there was a different problem. So at the beginning, from the 25th or so, some work had been completed at Sankofa ORF, and it took some time for gas to get to peak. Just as that happened, then there was a compressor trip um, at Abwazi. And then after that, we had low inflows from NGAS. Then there was a thermal plant in the Abwazi enclave that went down. And then another one much later. So it was just too many incidental happenings that made it difficult to fully explain. Because just when you think that you've crossed the Rubicon, another issue comes up. So that explains the challenges that we've had. But I do want to um, let the public know that it is not intentional to deprive anyone of power we thrive on giving power that is our business that is how we earn our living whether it is from the generators to the transmitter to the distributor or the IPP so it is not intentional there are exigencies that do emerge some are of a technical nature and the preference sometimes is to address it on a technical level before coming out. But for Ghana Grid Company as the transmitter within the value chain, if we are fully aware that there will be a persistent outage, we will inform the public. What we are unable to do is to tell which area will go off. That sits with the distributor, ECG, and it's up to them to make a decision if they want to, to make that information available. Uh, Jifa, thank you very much. And that there is Jifa Bampo, is manager, corporate communications at Greatco. And we've tried to get some clarity uh, from the ECG on what's happening, uh, just to get a sense of which areas will be affected. And as uh, Jifa just confirmed, we can't expect some shortfall. We don't know exactly what that will be. Yesterday, it was 550 megawatts. We don't know what that will be tonight. But you can expect that because of that shortfall that is being projected tonight, you can expect your uh, power in some parts of the country to be out. Uh, but we don't know where exactly as we wait to hear from the ECG. And as you heard earlier from the chair of the Mines and Energy Committee, this is a cash problem. And it tied to the current economic crisis. He says it's not an incompetent challenge. It is a cash problem. I want to bring in right now the ranking on the Mines and Energy Committee, uh, John Ginapo. Also joining me is Executive Director of Institute for Energy Securities, IES, uh, Nana Moisi. Uh, later, we'll tell you what we've been telling the IMF in the document we signed with them and what we intend to do with the energy sector challenges that uh, the country faces. Mr. Ginapo, thanks for time here on Top Story. So we've heard tonight from the chair of the committee who is very confident this matter will not become a full-blown doomsaw, but admit it's a cash problem. Uh, from where you sit on the committee, you get briefings on this regularly. What's your own understanding of the challenge that the sector is facing that has led to WAPCO cutting supply? said, It's a financial problem. It's nothing but financial. It has nothing to do with technical problem. And so when I hear some people say it's a technical problem, I find it very, very unfortunate. There's nothing technical about this issue. All the plants are working. The pipelines are available. Ghana Gas is working at full blast. ENI is working. The Sankofa fields are all producing gas. The only reason why we are facing this current doom so is that under this administration, they have not been able to pay for gas consumed, i.e. the value chain. It has to do with the gas itself, the cost of trans trans transmission or transportation, and also paying to the producers. And so there is no fuss about it. It's the truth is that they don't have the money to pay. And this has been lingering on for a very long time. 
right from January, there have been several reminders from WAPCO to government threatening to shut down the pipeline. At some point in time, they shut it down. There was negotiation and they reopened it. And so this time, WAPCO has decided that they can no longer trust this government. And so they've decided that they will shut it. And until they see something concrete, something tangible, they will not open the pipeline. And so it's led to a deficit of about 500 megawatts from Tema. We are just lucky as a country. It would have been worse. Because unlike 2014, 2015, when the Akosomo Dam could run only at 30%, today we have so much water, the hydrology is even beyond the maximum capacity to extend that they are spilling. And so that is what is even holding the system. But for nature, but for God's intervention leading to the filling up of the dam, the situation would have been exacerbated and it would have been terrible. And so if you want to drill it down, the bottom line is that government hasn't been able to pay WAPCO. WAPCO has sent several reminders, several assurances have come the way, but the money doesn't go. And so they finally decided that, look, enough is enough. But that is a tip of the iceberg. And that is not even the problem for me. The major problem is with Sankofa or ENI. We are facing a looming danger because government hasn't been able to pay for that gas consumed. And so ENI has fallen on the guarantee established by the World Bank. They've drawn the guarantee to almost 100 million. And by the standing agreement, once that guarantee goes below 100 million, technically it is deemed as a default. And once that is deemed as a default, it knocks off all World Bank guarantees, all mega guarantees, and all the guarantees from these multilaterals. And that will throw this country off GM. And as I speak to you, our power is threatening to draw on the guarantee as well. And so look, this is a wake up call. And that is why some of us are calling for a comprehensive overview. Government told us that they were engaged in what they call the energy sector uh, reform program. They spent so much money, involved all kinds of consultants, and yet five years down the lane, the situation is getting worse. We are facing a Herculean challenge. And John, and if all of us, and John, we heard earlier from your colleagues putting the debt at twenty million dollars. I'm talking about the WAPCO debt of twenty million dollars. Does that check with what you know? Yes, yeah, so far my check indicates that it's just about twenty million dollars, and that is where I get worried that if we cannot pay twenty million dollars as a country, and this whole nation is thrown into doom, so resulting in a shortage of 550 megawatts. You can imagine if ENI decides that they will shut off. That means they will be losing close to 200 million standard cubic feet of gas. Mm. That is going to be terrible. This, and this, we are heading towards that. Look, this, let's not deceive ourselves. This $20 million that you talk of, how much of that is legacy? As far as I know, there's nothing that is legacy because the NDC administration, when we were leaving office, had a program to construct our own dedicated pipeline. Onshore, this government decided that they won't go by that. They would rather sign an agreement with WACO. We even insisted that, look, insist or announce that you are still going to construct the onshore pipeline whilst negotiating with WACO. It strengthens your bargaining power. But when they know that you are in the process of constructing a pipeline, they would come begging. But once you announce that you will no longer construct the pipeline, it puts you in a terrible situation. They went and agreed on a high price. And today, look at where we are. So going forward, we would insist that this country should take steps to construct its own dedicated pipeline, not just because of the financing, but because of energy security. You do these things not because of financial reasons, but for security. Look at where we are today. If we had our own pipeline, even if we had challenges, like sometimes Ghana gas is not being paid, we still manage to run Ghana gas. If Ghana gas was not state owned, I tell you that would have been shut down by now. So we would make proposals, 
will continue to engage. We just hope that this government, at least for once, having gone full circle and hit the block, they would listen to us. Mm. Uh, John Janapo, thank you very much. Uh, I want to bring in now Nana Mwesi, who is Executive Director, Institute for Energy Security. Nana, so we heard uh, from my colleague, head of the Energy Desk, that uh, they, we may have some form of an agreement in the last uh, few hours. But Grico confirms that this doesn't mean that we're not going to have a shortfall tonight. Uh, from where you sit, and I know you have a lot of sources uh, working on trying to understand what is happening, what's your own understanding of the situation tonight and, and, and how serious is the is situation are we being told the whole picture thanks thanks for having me um evans and good evening to your listeners yes government has been able to engage wapco but there's not been any firm agreement we checked the last 15 minutes ago while you brought me online and uh yes the directive from wapco to ghana gas to close the supply valve still stands the valve are still closed, no compressor is working, no valve is open, and no gas is flowing. And that means that we are going to live with that for um, the next few hours, or probably up to tomorrow. And so we should still brace ourselves uh, to cover, or probably, um, you know, make do with the 500 megawatt deficit. And that's where our concern, uh, you know, is heightened. That yes, of course, we used to be a system where the thermal plants were basically hinged on light crude oil, heavy fuel oil, and others until we brought gas on stream. And then it tells us that almost all the thermal plants can equally run on other fuels. Where is our backup? Do we have any light crude oil on standby? Do we have any fuel oil on standby? Do we have any diesel on standby? So that at any point that we have any interruption in the pipeline system or the gas, gas supply system uh, by reason of technical or financial or even a terrorist attack, we'll still have something to fall back on in the immediate term so that we can resolve the challenge as we go along. We don't have any backup and uh, it becomes uh, you know, a cause of concern. And even watch this. This is not the first time we are hearing gas supply interruption. Just this year alone, we've recorded more than eight incidents, both from uh, Ghana Gas or the Western Corridor or from NGAT. So it is one interruption after another. It is one technical hitch or a financial uh, inducement after another. These issues must be resolved, Evans. And I need to ask again because in in these matters information is important we've been told it's simply a, a, a matter of we owe wapco and that's what it is is this bigger than that are we being given the full picture from where you sit is it all about paying wapco and our problems are solved and we can expect to sleep with our lights on for the rest of the time that of course uh we live on on this earth is there something more to this than just owing wapco if, if you get a good answer to this, you need to go back, Evans. Um, we have um, a section of the utility generating, you know, supplying fuel to the generators, the generators producing the power, another entity, Gridco, moving the power to uh, distributors. And within this chain, you have independent power producers and also national power producers. At the tail end of the value chain or supply chain, you will find ETG or Netco. They sit at the, the tail end. They sell to the consumer. They have to collect all the money that uh, is required. Then, of course, they need to come back and pay um, the transmitter of power, the supplier of fuel, uh, the transmitter of the uh, gas, and pay the power producers. If you have a power distribution system, that, uh, you know, um, encounter almost about 28% of losses for technical and commercial reasons, how would you be able to collect the money needed to service the other people? And so we'll pay WAPCO what we owe them, and just about $20 million. So what is left about $17.8 million, as we understand, this evening. You pay them. You still owe the IPP close to $2 billion. How are you going to pay them? 
you saw all um what's the name he and i they might come threatening you all gonna got and so it is not just about re- uh, paying wapco and our problems are solved the problems are bigger than what we see today we need to put our foot down we need to bring in efficiency into the power distribution and transmission system save the losses ensure that we collect enough money make sure that the water catch water for system is working and we don't accrue additional debt to the sector that's the only way we can survive as a country uh, thank you very much nana Moisi. my colleague is with me in the studio uh, because uh, as we know uh, this is a, a much bigger problem that mm-hmm. was part of our conversation with the IMF. Absolutely. That laid the foundation for the deal uh, that we got, the three billion deal. Government made some commitments because fundamentally the energy sector debt was was out of control. Mm-hmm. What were these commitments? So governments actually told the IMF that they were going to roll out an ambitious energy sector reform. And Evans, we know that shortfalls in the energy sector have been significant due to below cost recovery tariffs, large distribution losses, excess capacity amid take or pay contracts. And this has actually caused the central bank some 2% of its GDP in transfer, transfer pay year since 2019. And has also led to the accumulation of payable to the IPPs. And we are also talking about those who supply fuel, which include WAPCO and other institutions. So this is what we told the IMF, that we are going to embark on an ambitious energy sector reform. And we have timelines. Some are supposed to be in June and some by the end of this year. Okay, and uh, Mr. Jinapo, it's, it's on like, very quickly on that because that is so important because the government wanted to take a holistic approach mm. to this particular problem. And Mr. Jinapo, those commitments we made uh, to the IMF, they hold a solution, do they not? Hello, Mr. Jinapo, please unmute for me. Okay, um, we may have lost him there. But listen, uh, this is a story that we are keeping a close eye on. Uh, these commitments to the IMF are essential because that uh, holds, government believes, the key to solving this particular problem in a very holistic manner. Because it's not only WAPCO that we owe. We owe the IPPs as well. And yes. they've been complaining for quite yes. a while. Uh, and so that needs to be interrogated a bit more. And we'll be doing that just to get help you appreciate uh, the challenge with power supply. But as you heard tonight, you can expect some uh, some doom so uh, tonight in parts of the country because uh, even if an agreement has been reached, and as we said, there may have been some form of an agreement. Uh, Nana Moisi says that the valves are still turned off. Even if it's turned on tonight, it will take some time for you know the plants to receive the full the full gas that will require that the power uh, is running and the, the the pace that puts your lights on in a manner that you can rely on. Uh, we'll keep. Watching this space, uh, once we know more, you will know too. Uh, this is top story.